Today we are going to take a look at Alice Corporation versus CLS Bank International. This video is based on the, this blog. I'll leave a link in this, the dis description below. Now, the Alice Corporation patents. The Alice Corporation is the owner of several patents that disclose schemes to manage certain forms of financial risk. According to the specification largely shared by the patents, the invention relates to methods and apparatus, including electrical computers and data processing systems applied to financial matters and risk management. The claims at issue relate to a computerized scheme for mitigating settlement risk. That is the risk that only one party to an agreed upon financial exchange will satisfy its obligation. In particular, the claims are designated to facilitate the exchange of financial obligations between two parties by using a computer system as a third party intermediary. The parties agree that claim 33 of the 479 patent is representative of the method claims. Now let's look at patent 479 and in particular to claim 33. Claim 33 re uh, reads, a method of exchanging obligations as between parties, each party holding a credit record and a debit record with an exchange institution. The credit records and debit records for exchange of predetermined obligations. The method comprising the steps of A, creating a shadow credit record and a shadow debit record for each stakeholder party to be held independently by a supervisory institution from the exchange institutions. Obtaining from each exchange institution a start of day balance for each shadow credit and shadow debit record. C. For every transaction resulting in an exchange obligation, the supervisory institution adjusting each respective party shadow credit record or shadow debit record, allowing only those transactions that do not result in the value of the shadow debit record being less than the value of the shadow credit record at any time, and said adjustment taking place in chronological order, and D, at the end of the day, the supervisory institution instructing one of the exchange institutions to exchange credits or debits to the credit and debit record of the respective parties in accordance with the adjustments of the set permitted transactions, the credits and debits having e being irrevocable time invariant obligations placed on the exchange institutions. The intermediary creates shadow credit and debit records, account ledgers that mirror the balances of the parties' real-world accounts at exchange institutions, that is, banks. The intermediary updates the shadow records in real time as sh transactions are entered. The inter intermediary only permits those transactions for which the party's updated shadow records indicate sufficient resources to satisfy the mutual obligations. The intermediary instructs the relevant financial institutions to carry out the permitted transactions in accordance with the updated shadow records. In this way, the risk that only one party will, will perform the agreed upon exchange is mitigated. In summary, the patent claim 1. The foregoing method for exchanging obligations. These are the method claims. 2. A computer system configured to carry out the method for exchanging obligations. Those are the system claims. And 3. A computer readable medium containing program code for performing the method of exchanging obligations. Those are the media claims. All of the claims are implemented using a computer. The system and media claims expressly recite a computer. 
and the parties have stipulated that the method claims require a computer as well. Subject matter is eligible for patent protection. The Honorable Judge Thomas starts by reciting section 101 of the Patents Act. It defines the subject matter eligible for patent protection. It states, whoever invents or discovers any new and useful process, comma, machine, comma, manufacture or composition of matter or any new and useful improvement thereof may obtain a patent therefore subject to the conditions and requirements of this title. Now the exception to section 101 of the Patents Act. The Supreme Court have long held that this provision contains an important implicit exception. The laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas are not patentable. The concern that drives this exclusionary principle is one of preemption. Granting the patent would preempt use of this approach in all fields. This would effectively grant a monopoly over an abstract idea. The laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas are the basic tools of scientific and technological work. Monopolization of those tools through the grant of a patent might tend to impede innovation more than it would tend to promote innovation. This would be contrary to un the United States Constitution. The U.S. Constitution Article 1, Paragraph 8, Clause 8 states that Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts. Patent law may not inhibit further discovery by improperly tying up the, the future use of the building blocks of human ingenuity. All inventions in body use reflect, rest upon, or apply laws of nature, natural phenomena, or abstract ideas. At some level, all inventions in body use reflect rest upon or apply laws of nature, natural phenomena, or abstract ideas. An invention is not rendered, rendered ineligible for patent simply because it involves an abstract concept. Applications of such concepts to a new and useful end remain eligible for patent protection. In applying the Section 101 exception, we must distinguish between patents that claim the building blocks of human ingenuity and those that integrate the building blocks into something more. If the building blocks is integrated into something more, they transform them into a patent eligible invention. Patenting the building blocks of human ingenuity would risk disproportionately tying up the use of the underlying ideas. They are therefore ineligible for patent protection. Integrating the building blocks into something more pose no comparable risk of preemption. They, re they remain eligible for the monopoly granted under the patent laws. Now, distinguishing patents that claim laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas from those that claim patent eligible applications of those concepts. The court, by way of the Honorable Judge Thomas, refers to Mayo Collaborative Services versus Prometheus Laboratories, where the Supreme Court set forth a framework for distinguishing patents that claim laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas from those that claim patent eligible applications of those concepts. This should be done using a two step approach. First, step one is to determine whether the claims at issue are directed to one of those patent ineligible concepts. If so, then we move to on secondly to step two. In step two, it is asked, what else is there in the claims before us? To answer that question, consider the elements of each claim, both individually and as an ordered combination. It is considered to determine 
whether the additional elements transform the nature of the claim into a patent eligible application. This step two of the analysis is described as a search for an inventive concept. It is an element or combination of elements that is sufficient to ensure that the patent in practice amounts to significantly more than a patent upon the ineligible concept. Step 1. The Alice Corporation patents are directed to a patent ineligible concept. The Honorable Judge Thomas states that first it must be determined whether the claims at issue are are directed to a patent ineligible concept. He concludes that they are. The claims are directed to the abstract idea of intermediate settlement. Bilski v. Kapos 561 US 593 in the, U in the year 2010. The court by means of the Honorable Judge Thomas refers to Bilski versus Kapos. The claims in Bilski describe a method of hedging against the financial risk of price fluctuations. Claim 1 recited a series of steps for hedging risk, including 1. Initiating a series of financial transactions between providers and consumers of a commodity. 2. Identifying market participants that have a counter risk for the same community. And three, initiating a series of transactions between those market participants and the commodity provider to balance the risk position of the first series of consumer transactions. Claim four put the concept articulated in claim one into a simple mathematical formula. The remaining claims were drawn to examples of hedging in commodities and energy markets. The court, by way of the Honorable Judge Thomas, states that all members in the in Bilski agreed that the painted in Bilski claimed an abstract idea. This is because the claims described the basic concept of hedging or protecting against risk. It was found that hedging is a fundamental economic practice long prevalent in our systems of, of commerce and taught in any introductory finance class. Applying Bilski to the Alice patent, as mentioned, the Honorable Judge Thomas concluded that the claims of Alice Corporation describes the concept of intermediate, intermediated settlement. Use is made of a third party to mitigate settlement risk. Like the risk hedging in Bilski, the concept of intermediated settlement is a fundamental economic practice long prevalent in our system of commerce. The use of a third party intermediary or a clearinghouse is also a building block of the modern economy. Thus, intermediated settlement, like hedging, is an is an abstract idea and beyond the scope of section 101. Applying step 2, the court, by means of the Honorable Judge Thomas, stated that because the claims at issue are directed to the abstract idea of intermediated settlement, the second step in, May in Mayo's framework has to be applied. The court concluded that the method claims which may require generic computer implementation, fail to transform that abstract idea into a patent-eligible invention. Using Mayo in Step 2, the Honorable Judge Thomas states that at Mayo Collaborative Services versus Prometheus Laboratories, in Step 2 we must examine the elements of the claim to, to determine whether it contains an inventive concept sufficient to transform the claimed abstract idea into a patent eligible application. A claim that recites an abstract idea must include additional features to ensure that the claim is more than a drafting effort designed to monopolize the abstract idea. The Mayo case made it clear that transformation 
into a patent eligible application requires more than simply stating the abstract idea while adding the words apply it. The Honorable Judge Thomas finds the Mayo case in itself as instructive. The patents at issue in Mayo claimed a method for measuring metabolites in the bloodstream in order to calibrate the appropriate dosage of theopurine drugs in the treatment of autoimmune diseases. The respondent in that case contended that the claimed method was a patent eligible application of natural laws that described the relationship between the concentration of certain metabolites and the likelihood that the drug dosage will be harmful or ineffective. Methods for determining metabolite levels were already well known in the art. The process at issue amounted to nothing significantly more than an instruction to doctors to apply the applicable laws when treating their patients. Simply appending conventional steps specified at the high level of general generality was not enough to supply an inventive concept. The introduction of, com of a computer into the claims does not alter the analysis of Mayo at step 2. Mere recitation of a generic computer cannot transform a patent ineligible abstract idea into a patent eligible invention. The Honorable Judge Thomas concludes that these cases demonstrate that the mere recitation of a generic computer cannot transform a patent ineligible abstract idea into a patent eligible invention. Stating an abstract idea while adding the words apply it is not enough for patent eligibility, nor is limiting the use of an abstract idea to a particular technological environment. Stating an abstract idea while adding the, adding the words apply it with a computer co combines those two steps with the same deficient result. Thus, if a patent's recitation of a computer amounts to a mere instruction to implement an abstract idea on a computer, that ad addition cannot impart patent eligibility. This conclusion accords with the preemption concern that undergirds the Section 101 jurisprudence. Given the ubiquity of computers, only generic computer implementation is not generally the sort of additional feature that provides any practical assurance that the process is more than a drafting effort designed to monopolize an abstract idea itself. Do the claims do more than simply instruct to implement an abstract idea of intermediate settlement on a generic computer? The representative method claim in this case recites the following steps. Creating shadow record for each counterparty to the transaction. 2. Obtaining start of day balances based on parties' real world accounts at exchange institutions. 3. Adjusting the shadow records as transactions are entered allowing only those transactions for which the parties have sufficient resources, and for issuing irrevocable end-of-the-day instructions to the exchange institutions to carry out permitted transactions. It was contended that the claims are patent eligible because these steps require a substantial and meaningful role for the computer. As stipulated, the claimed method requires the use of a computer to create electronic records, track multiple transactions, and issue simultaneous instructions. The computer is itself the intermediary. The Honorable Judge asked the question whether the claims here do more than simply instruct the practitioner to implement the abstract idea of intermediated settlement on a generic computer. He concludes that they do not. 
The Honorable Judge Thomas states, taking the claim element separately, the function performed by the computer at each step of the process is purely conventional. Using a computer to cre create and maintain shadow accounts amounts to el electronic record keeping. It is, it is one of the most basic functions of a computer. The same is true with respect to the use of a computer to obtain data, adjust account balances, and issue automated instructions. All of these computer functions are well understood routine, conventional activities previously known to do the industry. In short, each step does no more than require a generic computer to perform generic computer functions. The court, by way of the Honorable Judge Thomas, continues and considered as an ordered combination the computer components of the petitioner's method. He found it added nothing that is not already present when the steps are considered separately. The method claims lack any explicit language to define the computer's participation. The method claims do not purport to improve the functioning of the computer itself. There is no specific or limiting recitation of improved computer technology. The claims do not claim an improvement in any other technology or technical field. The claims at issue amount to nothing significantly more than an instruction to apply the abstract idea of intermediated settlement using some unspecified generic computer. Under the precedence, that is not enough to transform an abstract idea into a patent-eligible invention. Claims to a computer system and a computer-readable medium. As to its system claims, it was emphasized on behalf of, of Alex Corporation that those claims recite specific hardware configured to perform specific computerized functions. But what was characterized as specific hardware, a data processing system with a communications controller and data storage unit, for example, is purely functional and generic. Nearly every computer will include a communications controller and a data storage unit capable of performing the basic calculation, storage and transmission functions required by the method claims. As a result, none of the hardware recited by the system claims offer a meaningful limitation beyond generally linking the use of that method to a particular technological environment, that is, implementation via computers. Alice's system and media claims add nothing of substance to the underlying abstract idea. It is therefore held that they too are patent ineligible under section 101. That's it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Alice Corporation versus CLS Bank International. Click the subscribe button, give this video a like. Thank you for watching and goodbye.